Cleaning up text strings is a common job. In this video, Phil will show you how to extract letters, either uppercase or lowercase, and a mixture of both, and how to extract numbers. Plus, he'll show you a really cool way to remove a wide range of characters from strings. I'm going to use the text.remove and text.select functions in Power Query to extract characters from text strings. I'm going to do this in Excel, but you can use the same code in Power BI, just copy and paste the query code. So starting with this table in Excel, I've got a bunch of random text strings. First things first, click into the table, data, and then from table range to open Power Query. I'm going to rename the query to text underscore select. Um, you can't use a dot in the name, so I can't call it text dot select. To extract all the lowercase letters, add a new custom column. Call the column lowercase. The code is text dot select, then open brackets. The name of our column which is text, comma, and then a list of the characters that I want to extract or select from the string. In this list here I'm using the dot dot operator to tell Power Query to create a, a list of every character from A to Z. So that was pretty easy and if we want to extract uppercase letters you can probably guess how we're going to do that. Add another custom column call it uppercase. Code is very similar to what we've just used. It's text.select, then the text column, and then the list of letters that we want to select or extract. Okay, so no major surprises there. Uh, if we want to extract numbers, then it's a similar kind of thing. Add a custom column, call it numbers, text.select, then the name of the text column, and then our list of numbers. If I want to extract letters and numbers, then it's just using a little bit of a mixture of the code we've already used for the previous uh, extractions. So add another custom column, call it letters and numbers, then text.select, the column name. Now in the list, we want to select upper and lowercase letters and numbers. So let's start by specifying the lowercase letters. Then we can tag on the uppercase letters into the same list, and then the numbers. Oops, and I've got the wrong bracket there at the beginning. Let's just change that. Click OK, and there's our letters and numbers extracted. OK, that's all pretty straightforward. Let's move on to text.remove. I'm going to duplicate this query, call it text underscore remove, and then delete all the steps after the change type. So text.remove requires you to specify what to remove, whereas text.select only needs you to tell it what to keep. Now that might sound obvious to say, but sometimes you may not know exactly what characters will be in the string, so text.remove can be less flexible to use. But there is a way around this, and I'll show you that in a second. If we want to remove the lowercase letters, then again, add another custom column, call it remove lowercase, text.remove, and then specify a list of lowercase letters. To remove uppercase, add a column, call it remove uppercase, text.remove, and then the list of uppercase letters. Removing numbers, add a custom column, call it remove numbers, text.remove, and then the list of numbers. And if you really have some reason that you want to remove all letters and numbers, add a column, call it remove alpha num, text.remove again, of course. And as with the previous example with text.select, we just need to create our list now with the uppercase, lowercase, and uh, numbers. So all of these examples are straightforward, but the drawback with text.remove is that using it in this way, you have to know what's in the string in order to remove it. And this isn't always the case in the real world. If you look at the text in row five, it has brackets or parentheses and lots of maths operators. Now your strings could be much messier than this with lots of other characters and you're not always gonna know what you're gonna get because you could be getting data dumped from external systems. Now, if I wanted to clean up that uh, data in row five, 
then I could use this code. I'm just going to call this uh, cleanup. So to remove the parentheses and the maths operators in uh, row five, I could specify them one by one like this. But doing that's kind of awkward. It takes time. You might miss one. And as I've said already, you need to know what characters are in there in order to remove them. But there is another way, and here's where knowing what's going on under the hood of Power Query helps. It might seem obvious that when I create a list, a dot dot z, that I mean all the uppercase letters from a to z, but what's actually happening? When you use the dot dot operator to create a list of sequential characters, what Power Query is actually doing is using the character's Unicode values to construct this list. Unicode is a technical standard for the consistent encoding, representation, and handling of text. If you've ever heard of ASCII, then this is kind of uh, ASCII's big brother and supersedes it. If I just scroll down, so looking at this Unicode table, you can see that uppercase A is represented by the decimal number 65, and uppercase Z is represented by decimal 90. So if you use the character dot two number function in Power Query, it'll return 65 for A and 90 for Z. So the list specified by A dot dot Z contains the characters specified by this, by this Unicode table with decimal value 65 through to and including 90. The key here is that the first character I specify, uppercase A, has a lower Unicode value than uppercase Z. I can actually create a list with any characters as long as the starting character has a lower Unicode value than the ending character. Let me show you another example. If I want to keep uppercase letters in my string, then I want to remove everything else. Rather than creating one list for lowercase letters to be removed and then another list for numbers and maybe several other separate characters that all need to be removed, using this Unicode table, I can create a list that specifies every character to be removed starting with the space character. Then scrolling down, you can see that the last character before uppercase A is the at sign. So I can write space dot dot at in my list, which means every character between space and at. If I keep on scrolling past the uppercase letters, you can see that the first character after uppercase Z is a square bracket. And then I want to remove everything else all the way down to the tilde. So back in Power Query, if I want to keep my uppercase letters, let's just add another custom column, call it keep upper, then text.remove. Now to specify the characters to remove, now remember I said I'm going to start with space, dot dot, then the at sign, then it was square bracket, and then all the way to the tilde. Now when I click OK, you can see here in my keep upper column, I have just uppercase letters. So if I want to clean up that mess in row five and just be left with numbers, let's refer back to that uh, Unicode table again. I want to create a list that removes all characters except the numbers. So you can see here, we're going to start with the space again and we're going to go all the way down to slash. Then we're going to step over the numbers, start again with the colon, and then go all the way to the tilde. So back in Power Query, create a custom column, call it keep numbers, text.remove, and then the list, and start with the space, then the forward slash, comma, then we skipped over the numbers and the first character after uh, our last number was the colon and then all the way down to the tilde. Click OK. And as you can see, I'm left with just numbers. So as you can see, that's a really good way to be able to remove a wide range of characters, particularly if you don't know what's going to be in the strings that you're dealing with. So that's how to use text.select and text.remove. I should say before I finish that I'm working with a standard English Unicode set. You may be working with an extended character set, depending on your language and or locale. Best of luck cleaning up those messy strings. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. 
and why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.